Yo guys, what up? So I got another free material for you guys and a free scene that you guys can have some fun with, take a look at, experiment, break down, try to figure out how I made it. It's the best way to learn out how to make materials inside of Octane. At least that's how I'm learning at the moment. So I want to share the process with you guys so you guys can also learn with me. Let me quickly show you what we're going to do here. This is a scene that we're going to you're going to have access to. It's just a shader ball. I was trying to practice how to make procedural scratches here. Nothing big and fancy. And then I also ultimately not in this photo here, but I did add some uh, edge wear on there also that's going to be available. You also going to have this scene and you can see got some particles, some dust particles floating around in the background here just to add a little bit of more atmosphere sphere to the photo trying to help us get that realistic look let's jump into the scene file here this is the scene you're going to have there is the shader ball link will be down to, in the description to where I got this from on Sketchfab to give credit where it's due then you also see here I have this if we zoom back and let me click on it here I think I may have it already turned off dust ball if we click down here we have dust particle dust particle box yeah, and it's deselected. Let me turn that back on and then you can turn that on and then you can select these particles here. Again, if you go into the settings here on this particle, we got about a thousand particles. You can change the number. It is animatable. Check that out. It is moving around and you got some animation going on. Just make sure you have your frame rate long enough for your scene. Right now it's set at 10 or at 40 for me. So just make sure you set that longer to whatever your needs are. And then if you come inside of here, you can also change the size of it by going into your random here and then go ahead and change the size if you want to make them bigger or smaller. Also, there is a dust particle element here. This is the dust particle. And if you want to see what the type of material on it at the moment, I just have it clicked into a diffuse material and on that diffuse material I have the opacity brought down if you want to have something with a little bit more punch you can go ahead and plug this in make sure you plug the admission into the admission slot of the diffuse and then plug this back into the first material so we're mixing a diffuse material with an admission uh, with a with an admission diffuse so this one just has a little bit more brightness, a little bit more punch. You can come in here and change the colors to, to match whatever you're looking for. Now onto our shader ball material. There are two materials on this, so you guys can enjoy both of those. We have the first one, which is the main one, which is my scratch, uh, scratch paint look a little bit. Here is the base color. The base color does have a smudge map plugged into the roughness, which also gets shared and plugged into the dirt here. So you can use that if you want. And then you change the color here for your base material. This is the color of the dirt because I have it connected to a dirt node. And then up here at the top is my mask again. Here's my workflow always base color, secondary color on the bottom, mask always on top, followed by the mixed nodes here. So they're very easy to follow along with. Here we have a dirt texture node, which you guys can play with. And this dirt texture node is being broken up with another noise pattern. And then that noise pattern is also being uh, transformed here a little bit. Just you can use this shape or this size to scale how big you want your patterns to be. Here we have this gradient map, which is connected to a hashtag. This hashtag is the actual scratches. This is what I was working on. This was the whole main objective of this sh shader was to work on making procedural scratches. Here you can change the radius of the scratches, the length of the scratches, how many scratches you want. This controls the contrast if you want them to be very pronounced or you want them to be like very light. And then here are just some more distortion nodes right here. This is actually making these lines crooked and distorted and, and basically what it says distorted because this without you take it away these are just going to be straight lines so this is breaking that up and then here another noise texture which is also breaking up the dis distortion here and then these are all scale nodes play with these scale nodes see what they do they change the effects of the actual way the scratches looks okay so that's that material there. And then I also have a metal silver material here, which again, I'm actually using index of refraction value, true values of what it would be. I think it was steel was the look I was going for. So these numbers do match the, the ROI of steel. And then I just have a, a little bump map, little bump map in here using the noise texture to break that up. And then the same here, we have another noise texture on top for the roughness. Again, what's really important that you should try to understand is these nose textures here and the values that I'm using to actually get things to look imperfection layer here, right? Practice using this node here. The main things you want to work on are, uh, 
octaves, omega, your gamma, and contrast. These two here will control the details. The higher these numbers up, the more detailed it will be, the lower, the more smooth it will be. And then gamma it up, how bright is it going to be? And then contrasting how sharp the edges are going to be on the contrast. Play with these nodes, get very intimate because this, if you master this, this really helps you to make grunge materials very easily. So that's just a quick look at this file here, guys. Have fun with it, break it down, like I said, enjoy it and take a look at it. I'm gonna have some more materials also coming here in the future. As I start making these materials, I'm gonna start uploading them to the GitHub or GitHub Gumroad so you guys can enjoy them, learn how to make your own materials. And in the future, I think, you know, people are already asking if I'm gonna make a material library. I will, but as I'm starting to learn these out, I'll get better, but I'm gonna give them to you guys for free for now. So just enjoy. One quick note, since these are free, the only thing that I ask for payment is if you guys wouldn't mind hitting the star button down on the Gumroad just to give me some feedback so I know if things are working out pretty good for you or if there's a couple of things I like to improve. So smash those star buttons, guys. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.